Hello, everybody. Hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Come on in, y'all. Come on in. <laughs> we are back. Finally. Andre, Andre. Oh, wait. All right. Come on, Instagram. Come on in here, Graham. <laughs> We about to vibe with Lexi live. See, you got anybody pulling up yet? You see any people? I can't see the comments. We got one, we got two. Hey, y'all. How are you? Thank you for joining. We are back. Hi. Teddy Riley and Babyface, back in effect. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Right, we're going to give it a couple more. I think minutes. we're just trying to get Instagram hey, Mariah. Huh? We're just trying to get Instagram set up, right? No, we want to gram. Okay, go ahead. All right. Just a couple more minutes. What's up, Mariah? Me and Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to get like two more people in here and then we're going to start because this interview is long overdue when i interview conversation i don't have to interview you we yeah know each other. um hey danielle all right so let's start let's start first of all i want to say thank you to everybody who came to um this live again tonight. Um, we were faced with a few technical difficulties, but we got it all worked out and we are here. Um, so I just want to introduce to some and present to others, uh, one of my dearest friends, Miss Tia Shanae. Hey y'all. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so Tia, what's going on? How you been? I know you are like a woman of uh, many different facets. How are you maintaining through this crazy pandemic? What's going on? How you staying so beautiful? She's so beautiful. beautiful. Don't, you, don't you agree? Beautiful. Well, first of all, um, I'm excited to be here. Damn. I feel like I'm, I'm like behind, like I'm living in the Stone Age or something because we're just trying to figure this out. So listen, I'm excited. I never did a um, live with two people on Facebook. So this is dope. I like it. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Lex, thanks for Ooh. having me. I appreciate okay. you. First of all, we got to rewind and tell the people how we met because I don't think people really know how we met. So I started telling the story the last time, right? So I met her in high school and I was yes. like, I was a crazy, crazy child. Anybody who knows me <laughs> knows I was about that action, right? So we were in about gym and somebody, um, most of the time in most high schools, girls share locker rooms. Um, share the lockers in the in the gym room. Somebody stole Tia's stuff out of her gym room locker. They stole my sneakers. They stole her my sneakers. sneakers. Yes. <laughs> my brand so, new sneakers. They were like, oh, um, okay, Miss McNeil, we're going to get to the bottom of it. I'm so sorry, sweetie. We're going to replace the sneakers. I said, replace <laughs> the sneakers. They, they stole my sneakers too. I, I, I'm a size eight. They took them. I had some uh, Harachis. I guess they like looked around and like investigated and wanted to find out if that was true. Of course it was not. They were over me, okay? And that's how I learned about T. That's how we met. And then um, after like our friendship kind of blossomed, I learned she can sing. And not only sing, sis can sing. And she was always so quiet and so timid. But when it came time to open her mouth, blow you completely away. She was, she did the lead, the first lead to tonight. Remember tonight, Tia? <laughs> it was like 26 of us in one group. 
<laughs> so Lex and I was in a group in high school, and I think it was about what six of us. Yes. It was about six of us in high school, and I was always like the one in the background. You were always the lead singer. So she was always the lead singer, and um, another one of our friends was the lead singer. But I always Ooh. looked up to you, you. But yeah. I always looked up to you because, I mean, your voice was phenomenal. It still is phenomenal. Wow. That says a lot. Thank you so much. Um, Tia, um, I think comment on Instagram so I can add you. But keep going. Okay. But yeah, so that's how we met. Oh, and then later, um, like our friendship definitely like stay connected. We stay connected through everything. Like uh, even in college, we were still like friends. And um, then we started singing together with Billy, Billy Thompson. Yeah. Uh, I think we would do like their Christian cruise. We would do like, I think it was like a show every week. Um, what else? Uh, concerts, yeah, you name it, we did it. So we've been on the music scene together for quite some time. So we definitely have that bond. It's like through and through when we, when it's not friends that we got that connection through music. When it's not music, she my baby god mom. Like, so that, this is somebody that's really close to me and I look up to her. She's saying she look up to me, but I really look up to her. I respect everything she's doing, everything that um, all her endeavors. I just can't wait to see what God has in store for her. So look out for her. Look out for her. She do a big thing then. <laughs> so how you maintaining though? Like how you how you yet hold it on? You know what? Honestly, I thought this was like gonna be like a really bad time because um, you know, a lot of people were out of work and a lot of you know things that we're into, things that we're involved in got shut down. So mm -hmm. I honestly going to be a time where it was just going to be crazy you know what I mean not being mm -hmm. able to perform not being able to promote a lot of things that I had lined up for this year I just thought it was just going to be like insane and it, at first when it started happening I was like okay I, I don't know where this is going but you know, we we got to do something here because I can't just sit mm -hmm. home like I'm going 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 but when I tell you like this is probably I know for me I can't speak for most people but for me I needed this time yes. and it's not even like it's it's not even chill time for me it's more like creative time yes. like I'm able, to more. I'm able to build more I'm able to write more and I still record um mm -hmm. I don't actually go into the studio to record but we've been going to um um I've been recording in my basement doing mm -hmm. reference tracks in my basement so right. once you know this whole uh, pandemic is over, then I'll go into the studio to actually record the music. But this time has, I don't know if it's just because of the seeds that I've been planting for, for years now, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're just starting to blossom. I mean, it's it's crazy. So I'm maintaining it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think um, this time is definitely for anybody. I would say this for anybody and I'm only saying it because I'm living proof. I totally agree. This time is not just to just sit around and drink and try weed or chase down boo or chase down bay. This is harvest season. This is it. Like the back to the drawing board, go back, try again, whatever you wanted to do. Um, if you wanted to do a clothing line, if you want to do hair, if you want to do nails, if you want to be a teacher, now is the time. You have the time to go back and perfect your craft, perfect your gift. It's, it's the, you don't have nothing but time right now. We don't know when the city is opening back up, but we can guarantee that it's not no time soon. So if you come out of this broke, that's the one you squat. <laughs> you sat on a nugget because this is the season for you to invest in yourself, push yourself forward, market yourself, lose weight if you want to. I know I'm on my little journey, lose weight, you know, get it right, get it tight, get it right. So when um, this world is open back up to you, it's yours. You can go in and take it over, right? So uh, T, um, I know that you have a few things going on right now. What, um, what you been working on lately? So lately, um, I, of course I stated that I'm doing music. So mm -hmm. I'm working on trying to get my next single done. Uh, we've recorded a yeah. lot of songs. 
it's probably it, it honestly i feel like it's going to turn into an ep because we've been recording a lot so um it's coming um outside of that so i started um i started selling a few things out of my closet just i was like okay you know it's, it's time for me to just get rid of some stuff spring clean and clean out my closet um but when i tell you it has turned into like a online boutique like been amazing i can't believe it yeah, honestly yeah. That, that wasn't the intention it was just to literally sell you know a few things that i had in my closet that i couldn't mm -hmm. wear anymore mm -hmm. but it's turned into like a massive not massive let me not hype it up but <laughs> it's turned into something that i did not expect it to turn into mm -hmm. it got way bigger than i expected it to um so it's called tia's a uh, big closet sale that's what i called it i probably yeah. need to rename it just a little ghetto <laughs> But it's you know it is what it is. That's what it was. That's what I thought of, and that's what I called it. Yeah, I I, just, I hopped on the other night, and mostly everything I saw, I like number one, I can't fit it, but it was sold, so that's a good sign. <laughs> Do you think this is something that you will keep doing, like as far as um, um? Everybody keeps asking me that. I mean, honestly, I can't make that determination because my schedule outside of quarantine time is like insane so i can't really say you know i'm gonna keep doing it i can't say you know i'm not gonna do it anymore at this point it's just wherever god leads me i never imagined doing something like this um so if it gets bigger it gets bigger and that's what i'm gonna go with i'm just gonna keep on going you know wherever god leads me so if, if it turns into a boutique an online boutique It'll turn into an online boutique. If it turns into a store, a physical store, then it'll be a physical store. But um, the way that it's going now, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's definitely going to be something, you know, bigger than what I expected it to be. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who are watching, you sit home and you're not doing nothing. <laughs> he is hiring. Okay. <laughs> she needs somebody to run an online boutique. Get your butt up and go to work. No, seriously. <laughs> like, it's getting real. It, it, I became let's, like a little. Let's go. Let's, oh, go. Yeah, let's get it. I was. I became like my own little Poshmark because I was going to sell mm -hmm. my stuff through Poshmark. I was just like, why pay the middleman when I can get rid of some of this you stuff? You could just be the middleman. And exactly. I can just be the middleman. Yep. So I even had people reaching out to me like, "Hey, can I sell through your platform or can you sell my stuff?" I was like, "Come sure. on, yeah, here you go, here you go." <laughs> so here's the venue. Here's the avenue to all my fashionistas. Here's a way right here. This is what this is all about. Like, this is what I want this segment to be about. Putting uh, the people yeah. who are featured for tonight on a platform so you can market yourself, put yourself out there, get some ideas. This is what I want this to be about. So yes, it's manifesting already. All right, here we go. All right, so we're gonna switch gears, play a little game. Okay. Ready? Same all right, game. Neo Soul. Hmm. You got four. You got Amy Winehouse, you got Jill Scott, Alicia Keys, and Sade. Somebody gotta go. I'm not sure Amy Wine. I'm not sure some of those artists. Let me not say any names. I'm not sure some of those artists fit into the neo soul uh, genre. Amy um, Winehouse. Amy's not really neo soul. No, she's more. She's more like soul music. Uh, so so okay. you. Said, Amy Winehouse, you said Jill, Jill Scott, Scott. You said Alicia Keys. I wouldn't put her in the Neo Soul box either, but who who was the fourth one? And Sade. And you said one has to go? One gotta go. Amy gotta go. Amy gotta go? Amy gotta go. You all agree? Amy gotta go? Amy if you agree, go. just say Amy, 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 Amy. If you agree, just this type Amy in. All right, ready? <laughs> the next one, R&B. Okay. Jasmine Sullivan, Brandy, Whew. Monica, Faith Evans. Oh, <laughs> as much as I like all four of these musical beasts, I got it. <sighs> I think Monica got to go. Ooh, I, that's what I would have put. I would have picked Monica. <laughs> <laughs> all yeah, right. I, I, Last I, one. I, Last one. Here we go. The Queens, okay. honey. The Queens. Aretha. Patty. Gladys. Shaka mm. Khan. One gotta go. Ah! 
<laughs> Aretha Patty. Who was the other one? Gladys Shaka. Knight and Shaka Khan. Oh my God. Okay, so what are we talking about here? Are we talking about vocally or are we just talking about performance? We just gotta go. Like they never existed. They never, they never, we could we could have done without your music. If we had to live without there being a patty, we would have made it. If we could have lived without there being an Aretha, we would have made it. Gladys Why you and somebody Shaka like uh uh one gotta go. I love <laughs> this is crazy tough. <sighs> I'm going to say, and I and I do not mean this, but since I have to choose, I'm going to say, Patty. I'm, I calling like her. I'm calling her. Give me a Patty Pop. Give me that Patty Pop. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Either Patty or maybe Gladys. Maybe. I don't know. No, one got to go. One got to go. You got to have a solid answer. One got to go. Maybe. All right, Gladys. Gladys. Gladys, you won't send Gladys out? <laughs> I, I can't even let her go. <laughs> Neither one of us wants to be the best man to take her off. Oh, All man, right. That's... So, moving on, moving on, moving on. This is fun. So, wait, let's take it back a little bit. You had, um, you met Aretha Franklin. I met Aretha, oh, yes. You? Yes. So, tell us about, a little bit about that. Um, this was when the Pope came to Philadelphia mm -hmm. and I was asked to be a part of a choir to uh, sing background for Aretha Franklin. Mm -hmm. I think this was maybe 2015 um, right. and we were under the leadership of Dr. Donald Dumpson. So we, um, it was at, we rehearsed at the Kimmel Center, but the uh, Pope came and spoke on the parkway. Okay. It was amazing. Honestly, she came in with such grace and, and just, you know, there was no like ego. There was no rudeness. There was no, she was so sweet and so kind and so respectful, you know, to everybody. She came in and she spoke to all of us mm -hmm. um, and she just came in and she rehearsed and she did her thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was definitely a blessing to be in her presence. I couldn't believe like, I thought, you know, maybe usually when stuff like that happens and you, you're dealing with a star of that caliber, you know, you're not really that close to them. Um, they're probably like far up on the stage and you like in the rafter somewhere, just looking down on them. But literally like, this was the piano, this was me, this was Aretha. Wow. <laughs> so it was, it was awesome. Oh, oh, wow. I forgot wow. About, not that I forgot about it. I just, I forgot about, you know, that whole experience. Those things, and that's how it is like, um, I, I ain't gonna say churchy, but you know, it is what it is. I love God, everybody know that. But um, um, sometimes like when God blesses you, he'll overflow you with so many blessings that you really forget like, wow, you know what? He has been opening doors. He has been making ways. He has been looking out. He has been putting me before people, great people before kings, just like he promised. Like we serve a mighty God. So, you know, that's that's something. And again, you never know who's watching. We're watching, we're rooting for you. Like we're, we want to see you win. So this Aww, is like awesome. So let's get into a little bit more about Tia. First of all, y'all, I don't know if y'all know, Tia has a dynamic sense of humor. Like she loves to cut on people. I she will get you out of here. I don't bother people, <laughs> just don't bother me. <laughs> she will get you out of here. All right, so. Let me ask a, a question to you, like about you. What would yeah. you say is your best quality? My best quality? Hmm. I would say, um, I would say I'm loyal. I'm loyal. I'm loyal to my friends. I'm loyal to my family. I'm loyal to, you know, whoever come, whoever is in my personal space. I'm a very, very loyal person. That's great. That's a great quality. What would you say is your worst quality? Like, I'm always late or I'm always... Not always late. I don't do lateness. Um, That's great. Work with <laughs> me on that. Yeah, because... <laughs> um, I would say my worst quality hmm, can slightly be procrastination sometimes. But I would say the reason why sometimes... It's, it's no excuse, but... 
sometimes I get overwhelmed and I tend to take on too much than I can bear. So now mm -hmm. I'm learning how to, you know, uh, organize my time and space stuff out so that I'm not so, you know, tired when I show up or I'm not so um, unorganized with things. So I try to make sure that, you know, things are done in decency and in, and in order so that I don't have to uh, procrastinate on it. But I used to be bad with it. Like I used to wait till the last minute to do everything. And I can't do things like that no more because it doesn't it doesn't do well with any of the businesses that I have going on at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what made you smile today? What made me smile today? Hmm. I was able to run outside today. I know I, you know, I had to go to the store because I'm in the house all the time, but I had to go to the store today and just being outside like I, I feel like we often take that for granted <laughs> like I was able to go outside today like that made me feel good <laughs> I was smiling too while I was up there I had my mask on but I was happy you <laughs> but no it I mean is. that's what really that's what it made me smile just to be able to get out the house for a few seconds you know and go to the store and get something that I needed wow I needed some hair products because I don't know if y'all see this bush on the back of my head, but I needed some hair products. So I went to Target to get some um, natural hair products and I was able to find it. And I didn't think I was gonna be able to find exactly what I was looking for. That made me smile. <laughs> uh, I'm laughing because <laughs> you mentioned hair products and it got to the point where like I was in a yeah. giant looking for hair products and they was they all the all the African American but I products was like fifteen dollars for like some edge control and I was like nah I was in uh I was in Rite Aid and I went to Rite Aid and CVS looking for products that you would not look for there. Like I was not I can't even find this here. I didn't even know y'all sold this. <laughs> so hey, y'all sell weed clippings <laughs> I'm in the grocery store too. Like, wait a minute. Let me see if I can find Carol's daughter. Carol, you know what I mean? Um, so, y'all got any drawstring ponytails? <laughs> <laughs> it was a hot mess. Yes. So, um, so again, like I said, we stress music a lot. Um, who was your biggest music um, inspiration? What genre are we talking about? Um, just overall. Like uh, we don't have to know them. It, you you can go. You could take it from R and B to gospel to jazz. You know, you worked in so many um, in so many arenas around so many different people. So um, as you grow in the industry, your your um, your influences change. People who you look up to change. They grow. So I mean, right. it's up to you. Let us know. Like who impacted you? Um. All right, let's start with gospel. So in my household, like my, you know, I, I listen to a lot of gospel because my mom, you know, raised me on gospel music. Um, but we listen to a lot of R&B in my house. So I have a lot of like, I have an old soul and I love old school anything, old school gospel, mm -hmm. old school R&B, old, old, everybody knows I'm a, I love old school hip hop. So that's, that's number one, but um, jazz and everything. So let's start with gospel. Um, I was raised on Shirley Caesar. So that's who we that's who we grew up listening to. We grew up listening to Shirley. Mm -hmm. um, so that was definitely one of my um, musical influences. The Clark, uh, the Clark sisters. Yes. They were um, the Pace sisters. Mm -hmm. Some of my musical influences. Uh, all right, let's switch it to R and B. R and B. So I don't know. A lot of people don't know this about me. My favorite R and B artist, and I mean, I watch everything that this person does, is Marvin. Gay. I oh, literally, uh, I am a huge Marvin Gay fan. Really? Marvin Gay, um, Mary J. Blige. A lot Who of people don't Mary? know. Mary. So can I can I explain Mary real quick? Because a lot of people don't understand when I talk about Mary, because people are like Mary. People don't understand. Mary, <laughs> the reason why I love Mary so much is because she can still make music to this day and she evolves every single time she puts out something she evolved with time and that's hard for an artist to do because most artists you know well not most let me not say that but some artists 
they stick within that, you know, they don't know how to like switch it up or don't know how to yeah. change the time. Yeah. But Mary can flow with it. Like, and she's just, yeah. just super dope when it comes to business, when it comes to yeah. everything. So that's yeah. why she's one of my musical influences. She's a music chameleon for sure. She is. And like, she yeah. just, you know, she keeps evolving. And yeah. that's beautiful. That's a gift to have, mm -hmm. you know? Um, Whitney Houston, of course. Uh, uh, Layla Hathaway. I love yes. Layla Hathaway. Yes, me too. Um, I just I can go on and on and on about uh, R and B, um, hip hop. You want to know? Hip I know this is a gospel show, but can we? Go I know. I think no, 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 no. It is a gospel show. We love God, God first. But we can talk about any and everything. All right, I'm gonna hurry up because I don't want to keep talking. So hip hop. Oh, Some of my favorite. I think my favorite hip hop artist will probably. Wait, wait, wait. Can I say? Can I say? Can I say? Can I think? Who, can I say who I think it is? Is it Nas? Everybody knows that. Ah, I'm a Nas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. <laughs> I am hands in a nice fan, but I love, I mean, I like um, conscious rap. I like, you know, the mm -hmm. conscious stuff. So I love Nas, yeah. I love Common, I love Most Def, I love Black Thought, I love right with Tribe Called Quest. We can go on and on and on. Um, jazz. Hmm. Yeah. Come on. Lately, and it started coming back to me too. Lately, I've been watching, um, my, okay, so jazz, my influence was uh, Miles Davis. Okay. I love Miles Davis. Um, John Coltrane. Mm -hmm. John, John Coltrane was like the bomb. Um, Sarah Vaughn, uh, of course, Ella Fitzgerald, you know, the ones that we are, we're all familiar with. Um, let me see, what genre didn't I hit? Wait a minute, what was it? Put a, put a pin right there. Tia, remember in King, when Jean Baylor used to come and sing with us? Yes. Okay, so yeah. I see on my page, it's a lot of millennials, right? Jean Beller, if you do not know, I wish yes. I could tag her. Zane. Zane. Oh my God. The group, Zane. Um, yeah. What's the song? Well, it's a group thing. Y'all probably don't remember it. <laughs> this girl, I'm sorry, this lady, this, this woman, woman, this woman. woman can sing the heavens down she the crazy came thing to is, our school yeah and blew us away like she can still sing to this day sing. her voice is like water it just flows I follow her on instagram she's still all so do i so do i yeah she's amazing uh, man. she's amazing man. still a beast yes yes absolutely so go ahead we stop that jazz um i think we what what are the, oh uh classical Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that's interesting because classical music, I didn't really get into until I was in college. Like I studied classical music for like two years, but I didn't really get into classical music. I wasn't raised on classical music until I became an adult. So, um, I mean, the only classical, I guess like opera and stuff like that. And I love opera music, by the way. Uh, like Leontine Price, people like that, but I'm not like 100% familiar with like every, you know, mm -hmm. opera or mm -hmm. classical artist, but I do like classical music. Let me tell you when I got into classical music when I was a, a preschool teacher. Mm. I got into classical music when I became a preschool teacher and I took a train in the year before. No, I took a train in that summer before I got the job and I was just like brushing up because I, I, I always work with kids my whole life. And I was brushing up on like, you know, what, what am I going to do? How am I going to approach? Because I, I like three to five year olds when I was a teacher, but like yeah. working with the smaller kids, it was like, this is really intimidating. So I took a class and they said, the music that you play in the classroom will set the tone for your day. So I'm like, I know I can't go in there and play no, play no uh, Kirk Franklin, I, I, which I've done that before. But yeah. I was like, how can I do? It? And I used to keep classical music on in my day, and it it just like helped the structure of our day. Like yeah. everything just went so much smoothly. Like it was calm. You know what though? Um, for me, like I always felt like if you could master as a, now I'm talking from a vocalist. If you can master three genres, if you can master singing jazz, and if you can master singing classical music, and if you can master singing opera music, you could probably be a 
well, you probably will be a phenomenal singer. Those mm -hmm. for me, those are the three, the, um, the hardest, those three are the hardest genres to learn because it forces you to use, you know, those muscles that you need in order to sing properly. Mm -hmm. It literally <laughs> forces you to, you know, when you want to do all those riffs and runs and scats, you learn all that stuff in jazz. You learn all that stuff, you know, through classical music, you train in your voice. So once you get, if you can master those three genres, I mean, you don't have to master all of them, but if you can master one of the three, jazz, classical, or opera, hands down, you, you will probably most likely be a phenomenal singer. Yeah, go in and a lot of people uh, genre of music. A lot of people like a lot of people like to start with R and B, which is fine. R and B is fine, but if you want to learn how to sing properly, study jazz, study opera, training. study classical. Mm -hmm. I agree. Get that ear training and be able to listen. Get that the vocal control. training and have control. Yes, you have to. That that that's a that's a key player. That's yeah. We dropping some nuggets here, y'all. Even if you're not in music, listen. Like not just basketball, like you might need to like, see what's, see, try your hand at football, try your hand at face, baseball, get some speed up under your belt, like, right. come on. So one thing we didn't mention as far as music is we didn't mention rock. And I know you got a little secret talent that you, uh... <laughs> <laughs> nah, like it's, <laughs> I, I, so I'm learning how to play the bass, but yeah, I ain't been in nobody's lesson, so I don't know, she ain't ready for that. But no, I would like to really, really master it. Um, it's a, it's an interesting instrument to learn and I would really like to master it. I'm not there yet. I do need to get back to my lessons, um, but I have not been able to uh, get, it's a, that's an excuse. I don't like making excuses, but cause I could be practicing a little bit, but I do every once in a while, I'll pick up my bass and I'll start playing a little bit, but yeah, catch me in about six months. And I should have that mace, that, that mace, that so, bass down. So you want the bass. bass down. So y'all, we are not doing nothing. Just to just, uh, just center a post or something. Yo, pick that bass up. What you doing? No, I pick it up sometimes, but I'm just saying, I need my teachers around. My teachers are all, you know, my teachers are spread out right there. Mm -hmm. But I pick it up on my own sometimes. And then I watch YouTube videos to teach myself, you know, how to play the bass. I'm not triple trash, but I'm not triple good either. <laughs> it'll come. It'll come. We believe. We believe. So, um, is there anything else that you wanted to kind of, oh, the business side. I know you got a couple of things going on business-wise. Like, you want to drop some nuggets on us from, from that aspect, business and investments. And, like, when I say, yo, when I say that, Tia is the, like somebody who you could go to and kind of like ask her about a little bit of anything and she got she give you a little bit of everything this is your girl <laughs> a little bit. um as far as the business side for me honestly i just i've always wanted to put myself in a position where um i didn't have to depend on you know one source of income so and i'm really really big on building wealth uh, for myself, building wealth for my family and building wealth um, in my community, something that I'm working on. But uh, let's start with the music. Definitely uh, the music. I want to create the product so we can keep pushing that out. Um, the closet came out of nowhere. So that's something that I'm exploring. Also, I just put a post up. I didn't get a chance to respond to everybody, but I am. But I am a part of an anthology and an anthology um, is basically, I think it's about eight of us. It's about eight women. And we each share a story in the book. So the book um, has been out for a minute, but I haven't had a chance to release it because I was going to do this big release, but COVID-19 got in the way. Mm -hmm. So we decided to uh, wait before I released it. But I just put up a, a post actually before I jumped on here uh, to let everybody know that we're taking pre-orders. So I have the book coming out. Also, um, I think everybody pretty much knows this about me, but I'm really heavy into, um, starting to get heavy into it, but I'm really um, heavy into real estate. So I enjoy the process. I am working on getting an investment property. I am hopefully one day going to be renting my current home out. Um, I need to get out of it first. How about that? I don't think nobody wants to come in and live with me. 
but I need to, um, so I'm real big on real estate and I want to start building in my community. I want to start buying in my community um, and then start, you know, doing things in my community to help build it up as far as real estate is concerned. I'm really, really big on it. I love it. I enjoy it so far. Um, what else? And I still work a nine to five. Like I still got a nine to five. So I still work. So just trying to build, you know, businesses for myself. But you know what? The, the most important part, I don't like to be all over the place. I don't mm -hmm. like to be here and there and everywhere. So I'm really trying to hold, um, hone in to, you know, who I really am and who I really want my brand to represent, you know, mm -hmm. but it's all coming together. This is my season, honey. It's just blossoming and blooming and things are just coming out of the works that I yes. had no idea would even come to the, you, you know, yes. the forefront. But I'm excited about it. Yep. That's great. And we're excited for you. So again, y'all, y'all listening, y'all watching. Now is the time. Uh, we have, a, um, I guess you could say it's a slogan, a slogan at our church. Don't, don't think it, think it. Write it down. Write the vision down. Don't, don't just think it in your mind. Write it down so you can see it every day. So you can go, yeah. so you can memorize it. Like we do the same thing with the word of God. If that's what you want to do. You want to get closer to God. Don't just think about it. Write it down. I want to get closer to God. I want to pray more. I want to learn how to fast. Listen, it, write it down so you can see it. It's a daily reminder, a daily reminder right. of where you want to go, what you want to do. And it will start to come to pass. Things will start to form things will start to shape like um i think um tia said something earlier about um she got seeds in the ground and we know that um this rain is bringing forth the harvest yes we know is. that um somebody said that rain is a nuisance but when you got seed in the ground it's a blessing coming forth yeah. so that's what we want like we want that's what we're here for we're here to be the rain and the seed that you planted um I want to have people on here that's just going to be your rain, just um, give you little tools, give you a little insight, give you information, give you resources to what you want to um, embark upon. I'm here for y'all. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. So, yeah. Um, all right. So one more. Okay. Game. Okay. Just don't, don't know, you know, heavy hitters in there. <laughs> all right. Here we go. It's not about music. We going to start talking about uh -huh. boys. Oh God! <laughs> so here we go, man candy. Idris Alba, um, Tyrese, um, Idris Alba, Tyrese. Uh, what's the guy's name with the uh, the eyes? Not Forrest Whitaker, sis. <laughs> Please don't throw Forrest in because he's out. Forrest gotta go. <laughs> Do not. <laughs> Try <Forrest> Whitaker. <laughs> sorry, Forrest. We love you. I ain't sorry. No. <laughs> it's like Forrest might need me one day. Forrest, I'm sorry. I know exactly. Like, come on. You might need me. Just talking about seeds in the ground. Forrest, I you gonna say Forrest, I love you. Forrest, I love your ad. <laughs> <laughs> or no, Tyrese, Idris Alba, the one with the eyes. Um, Cause I don't know. Yes, you do. Light eyes, light skin. He was in Think Like a Man too. He was in Think Like a Man. Think like a Man too. Oh, uh, Michael Ely. Michael Ely. For, for I was about to say Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> Michael Ely, Idris Alba. Um, who did I say? Tyrese. Or Channing Tatum. Um, one gotta go. Marry one, kill one, date one, just and break up with one. This ain't this isn't too hard because these these men unfortunately are not, are not your type. Because this is a great segue to my next question. So go ahead. Marry one, kill one date one and break up with one. Okay, so I'm not gonna marry Tyrese because he was going through his whole emotional roller coaster and I'm not, hey, that ain't my speed. Crying. He always is crying about something. But. Marry one? I don't know if you saw my uh, status a couple months ago and I almost got my head bit off about Idris Elba. I'm not an Idris Elba fan. 
Don't bite my head off, ladies. I'm just I not that I'm not a not fan. Anymore. I used to be. I like his art and I like, you know, his acting, but as far as looks, I think in my post I said I I don't really see what everybody sees, but if I had to marry one, it would be him because of his, you know, his character. Okay. I would marry his character. Um, when I say character, like the man that he is, he seems to be a very, um, you know, upright man. And he seems to be a, a man of integrity. So he would probably be the one that I'd marry. Tyrese, I'd kill. Uh, <laughs> he would probably kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> he's so miserable. I cannot stand a um, miserable man. Like, he's so miserable. I, I just, I can't. He's, Yeah. Um, Michael Ely, I would probably date only because he would not be my type and I would step out of my comfort zone with him. So he would probably be somebody that I would date just to step out of my comfort zone. And then what was the last one? I think I said Channing Tatum. Channing. And what would I do with him? You can like just... Yeah, Channing gotta go. He gotta go? Yeah, bye. So for all you guys out there, what is Tia's type what's your ideal guy from personality so, all the way down to looks because like you know so let me say this and I mean I, I feel like probably if you was to ask, if you were to ask me this question when I was 21 I probably would have gave you like this long list like oh he has to look like this he has to look like that but at this point in my life I don't I can't say that I have a type honestly I, I just need somebody that has a good character you know what I mean? Like I look at, at this point, I look at personality and I look at character. Now I'm not saying that I would, you know, date somebody that I'm not attracted to, but um, I believe if, if God sends, you know, once God sends him to me, I'm going to be attracted to him because it's what God wants and mm -hmm. I'm attracted to what God wants. So um, I can't give you like a physical type, um, but I look for good character, a man of integrity, um, a man that is, um, honest, a man that's loyal, a man that, you know, family oriented, stuff like that. So that's my type. I was going to say something, but that's the Lord gonna... holding my toe. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? I'm not going to say it. That's the Lord holding my toe. This is an open forum. You can say it. Yeah. Nah. So what's your ideal date? Like if you could in your mind, like imagine your best date and it actually come true, what would it be? My ideal date? So I really, really like high rise buildings and I really like being outside um, on high rise buildings. So my ideal date would be on a high rise building somewhere outside. Cause I, when it's summertime and when it's nice outside, I like to eat outside. Me too, um, oh gosh. It's the best, yeah, but just yeah. being outside and the summer breeze and I'm just, I'm honestly, I'm just a, a, a I wouldn't say simple because I'm not, it doesn't take a whole lot to make me happy, but um, something like that or a dinner date on a yacht. Like I really, really would want to do something like that. Um, but it has to be like evening because uh, I ain't trying to be out on the water at night <laughs> because if I drown, I can't see. <laughs> So it, <laughs> what? it has to be like an evening date so um like an early evening like four or five o'clock before the okay. sunset before the sunset. oh no no, no you saw that movie good. open water where they got stuck on the water and I, yeah no <laughs> so, um i would like dinner like on a yacht something like that like i just love being outdoors at night in the summertime i think it's so beautiful same thing. I, I'm an outdoorsy person. And my husband like, let's go inside. There's too many bugs. Like, but I, I love it. Take me outside all the time, especially in the summertime. I love it. Like outdoor eating, that's my thing. Yeah. So I, I totally agree. And the yacht thing too, I think I ran that past them one time before. It's just like no good yachts. And I ain't eating on the spirit of Philadelphia. So you hear that, guys? She likes high rise buildings. And dinner on a high rise type? building, not the projects. Like we're not doing that. Not not. <laughs> Is this a date inside? You want to go on a terrace on a fire escape? No. <laughs> Get your life together. <laughs> All right, one more one more thing, and then we going. Uh, I guess open it up for some questions. Okay. Um, four places. No, yeah, four places you would like to travel to uh, um, across 
across the U.S., across the country. And um, I think you asked a question today on Facebook, I think it was, would you travel mm-hmm. cross country by yourself? Um, I, oh, I would. I absolutely would. But, you really? know, of course, like I come from a very close family. So, of course, my family's like, no, don't do that. But <laughs> I would love to um, travel to, a, to anywhere like by myself. You know, I, I enjoy my company. I enjoy being by myself. I really mm-hmm. do. But uh, places that I want to go, definitely Africa. I've never been to Africa. That's a good one. And I absolutely must go to Africa. Um, and I want to explore like different parts of Africa. You know what I mean? Um, I would definitely say I've never been to Dubai. I, that's definitely on a bucket list. Mm-hmm. I've never been to um, Bali. I would love to go to Bali. And then Why you also, in Dubai? You might as well stop by Bali, right? Aren't they close? I'm not sure. I think because I know Bali is like in India, but and Dubai is near like. I don't, I don't know. I've never been. I went to King. So, I mean, I don't. <laughs> okay. I got so, it. Um, don't judge me, okay? <laughs> um, and then I would also like to go to, um, I wouldn't mind going to like Japan. You know, I would love to explore like Asia, places over there. So. Not now, but maybe later. <laughs> yeah, not now, but you know, later. Are we going to open it up? For some questions, I, however, am still trying to learn how to work this thing. So I'm not seeing any, but if you are on your side, let it rip. Any questions for Tia? Yeah. Let me see. Um, who would you like to work with on your future projects? Who asked that? I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I just made it up. <laughs> um, as far as what, producers? Um, uh, yeah, I get it. Oh, yeah, shout out some producers. I know you know some dope ones. And why haven't you done a voice yet? Because I don't know what that is. I just started seeing it like the other day it's so fun like it's really fun you i gotta check it. it out um producers okay so and this is so crazy because i wrote a list down of producers that i always wanted to work with like you know if i ever when i not if i ever but when i get to that point um but Lashawn daniels was on there man and that thing tore me up i love Lashawn daniels i've always 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 wanted to work with him um, but give me some references like how would I know him like what has he done LaShawn I don't think people cannot know LaShawn LaShawn has produced for probably everybody that we a lot of people that we listen to today Michael Jackson um of course he's very known for producer for Tamar um oh. he's produced for um uh LaShawn I, I can't even think off the top of my head but is I mean, he kind of like heavy set LaShawn Daniels yes can um, he sing um, I think he does some singing. Well, he did some singing. He passed away uh, oh, last year. Oh, the yes. Sean Daniels. Yes. He was so, like, a, he was the GOAT. Like, yes. yes Sean, he worked with Brandy. He worked yes. with everybody. He worked like, with I everybody. Yes, absolutely. A yes. lot of people that he worked with, but he was definitely on the list. Yeah. Um, I would love to work with like Nissan Stewart. If I could work with Nissan, like that would be awesome. Um. There's so many producers. Like, I could just go on and on. Of course, Rodney Jerkins. Like, who wouldn't want to work, work with Rodney Jerkins? Mr. Rodney. How you have a guaranteed Rod. hit? Warren Campbell. Yeah. Um, oh, God. Like, it's just so many producers that I can name. So um, let me tell you one time, right? Back in the day when I was, like, a thirsty, uh, I guess, I guess music artist, I called Dark Child Studios and sang. Who did you sing to? The secretary? I don't even know. I think it was the receptionist. Because <laughs> you didn't get the Rodney. <laughs> and I killed it. And she was like, oh, that is so nice. All right, well, um. <laughs> she, you should have recorded it and sent it to Rodney. You got to get you a manager so he can bring you up here. That's how you're supposed to do it. But you did kill it out. 
It's like, all right, thank you. <laughs> Sis, slow down. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, um yes yes you took you took warren campbell yeah that's somebody who i really um would like to work with but I, it's a lot of people here in philly too like yeah, i always tell people, that. like you don't even have to like really leave philly yeah. because there's so many producers that are still here like yeah. great producers people that you probably didn't even know that they produced for yeah, yeah you know yeah, yeah, and they're yeah. still here in philly they're still home mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to collab one day with Jeff Bradshaw. Now, really? I, I, yeah, I know, That's like, funny. I know Jeff, like, I know, I know Jeff from like back in my Jehovah Shows and days. Like, I know Jeff from back there. Like, that's not hard there. though. Jeff is still right here. I know, but I don't think I'm. I don't. I ain't ready yet. I'm not there yet. I don't think I'm ready yet. I don't think he would have me. But when when I when I'm there. When I when I see he dream no when I get there, I, I listen we gonna go full throttle. I Jeff Bradshaw. Um, Alex, all you gotta do is make one call and Jeff is I like probably probably you probably right. Jeff is not he's not un, he's not unreachable. I should say. I know I don't know Jeff Bradshaw, Aaron Draper. Okay. Yeah, like I want to do some work with them. Um, remember the horns. Are they still around? I mean, that is Jeff Bradshaw. Um, who else? Oh, The Roots. Okay. And Miss Jill one. Scott. Like, um, I don't know about singing with her, but if she could just mentor me. Okay. Like, just give me some insight. I, I, mean, I, I mean, think this lady was my teacher at one time before. <laughs> I think she was my teacher. She used to sub, and I believe she subbed me one time. <laughs> I do. I do. Jill, Jill is not that much older than us, you know. That's what, so so my girlfriend said there, like, I don't think she was your substitute teacher because she's, like, in our age group, so. She's not I mean, that, I mean, she's not that far off from us, so. Maybe it wasn't her. Yeah. Okay. So you got any questions on your end? Any questions come through? I can't see, um. I can only see who's watching. I can't see the questions. Me neither. That's the same thing I'm going through. Yeah, it's stuck on like. Yeah, I can't really see the questions. Mine's is delayed, I think, on my phone, my cell phone. But I think this was a great combo so far. So do you have any like thing you want to share? Oh, um, yeah, we didn't, we did, we did, we talked about pet peeves. So what can we expect from you for, because 2020 is kind of like, it's going to be what it is right now. Yeah. But like 2021, yeah. when Funkash, the doors open back up again. So I'm not giving up on 2020 just yet. Okay. Um, because there's still a lot that can be done in 2020. We have technology now, you have the internet, you have social media. So it's a lot of stuff that we can still do, you know, in 2020. Mm. Um, I am planning to, at some point, jump online and uh, sing or do something because I feel oh, like- Are you gonna sing tonight, Tia? No. Come no. on, T, please. I feel like it's, um, it's necessary. Tia, but... real quick, come on, we got a couple minutes. I, I had you for two hours, real quick, boom. You didn't have me for two hours, but can I finish my statement? So then um, I do, I, of course, I want to continue to boutique. I don't know what's going to happen and what's, you know, where that's going to go, but I want to continue doing that. Um, the book is going to come out eventually. It's going to be released. Eventually I'll have something. And then also another single or another EP, something is going to happen. Um, the songs are getting done. You know, now we're doing the groundwork now. So hopefully they'll be done. So I will have some more music out this year. I'm speaking it in Jesus name. Yeah. <laughs> so are you going to sing a little something? Oh, can you sing a little bit of your, um, you know? Oh, PJ said, hey, y'all. Hey, PJ. Hey, PJ. PJ Paul Jackson. <laughs> um, okay, I'm sorry. What did you say? Are you going to sing a little something? Um, I could say, you, you know, that's what you want. Yeah. To do. Yeah. Come on. Okay. So, um, mm. so, you know, was released about 
I thought it was two years ago, but it wasn't. You Know was released three years ago. Mm -hmm. You Know is my very first single, as most of you already know. Yeah. You know? Um, but it came out about three years ago. So that's a long time. It should have been a lot of music uh, since then, but that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, okay. Let's see what you know. You know. Can you and Colin clap y'all fingers? Clap for your hands. Snap your fingers like this. <laughs> it's like the de delay, like. <laughs> okay. I know it feels like the world is on your shoulders. Temperatures are rising, but nights getting colder. Don't spread your wings to fly away from here. I got your back until the end. I'll never let you fall. Where are your fingers? You shine, you grind, your crown fits right. You're a valued warrior. You know, you know, you know, I believe in you. Hey, hey, I fight, I cry, I try. I see the queen in you. I dream, you dream, we grow. All things are possible. Nothing's unachievable. Our backs against the wall. He'll see us through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, he will. <laughs> Miss Tia, Shanae, y'all. Listen, Miss Tia, Shanae. Love her. Love her to life. Any questions? Any questions on your end? Because I still can't see. My cousin is here. Tiffany, hey. She said, you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? I can't see. I got some. Hey, Cammy. Thanks for joining me. Anybody else? No, I think that's it. Questions. Well, we're going to wrap it up. I'm not going to hold you. I want to thank you for being my thank first guest of many. This is it. It ain't over. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you for coming on. And um, again, look for her. The anthology is coming out. The music, download, you know. And yeah. um, look for Miss Tia. She, 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 she's coming, she's up and coming. So Thanks. we love y'all. Thank y'all for joining and um, see you next week. Peace out. Bye. Bye.